Hello, everyone. Welcome to the November community meeting for the Transmart Foundation. Uh, we hold this meeting once a month on the third Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. These meetings are recorded and all made available on our website, usually this, the end of the day of the same day uh, of the presentation. Today we're going to do, uh, probably not do much of an update on the foundation. Uh, we'll talk briefly about the roadmap, uh, do a quick review of the annual meeting, and uh, spend a little bit more time on the platform release 16.2, which is about to enter into its beta. <clears throat> um, jumping right in to 17.1, uh, work is progressing. Uh, active development is underway at the Hive, uh, and they are making good progress. Uh, we understand. Um, the milestones and the, the build phases are here, and uh, work is, is progressing quite well according to plan. Uh, they did give an update at the annual meeting uh, on the entire project. That also described some of the technical details uh, on the implementation, and uh, you can see all that uh, on our website uh, as you go through, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, again in a, in a few minutes. Um, and I think that we will have them give uh, more detailed uh, the Hive will give a more detailed presentation on 17.1, uh, either at the next community meeting or the one after that uh, as we go through. Um, <clears throat> but uh, as, as I said, things are well in, underway and uh, on track there for the, for the release. I'd like to talk briefly about the annual meeting. Uh, this was just concluded a couple weeks ago uh, at uh, UCSD uh, in La Jolla, California. Uh, we had uh, some lovely weather. Uh, it was at uh, a wonderful facility in Atkinson Hall uh, that offered a, a, a state-of-the-art auditorium, uh, a huge data wall uh, with uh, a lot of cool features uh, that we were able to, to use and enjoy during the sessions. Um, those of you who attended know that we had uh, six uh, really outstanding keynote talks um, on a variety of topics, uh, including the... Uh, the microbiome uh, and uh, some um, discussions around uh, uh, sem uh, semantically based uh, database uh, that uh, Marcy Harris is working on at the University of Michigan, um, information on the National Resource for Network Biology by Trey Eidecker uh, from the university. Uh, Nicholas Bloomberg was not able to make the meeting but did give a, a very nice talk on Elixir uh, and um, the European Life Science Infrastructure uh, over uh, the network, uh, and we were able to record that uh, talk. And then we had a, a very stimulating dinner talk by Cleanthus um, uh, about uh, kind of kind of the state of uh, biotechnology. Um, the meeting, as I said, took place uh, at the University of California, a very nice facility, um, and uh, we had about. Um, 85 attendees uh, at the meeting. Uh, our co-hosts were Jeff Greta from the university uh, and Julie Bryan from Rancho Bioscience, who uh, really helped a tremendous amount uh, pulling this whole uh, thing together for us. Uh, our sponsors for the, the year um, have been uh, Rancho Bioscience, GeneDX, and EPAM. Uh, as corporate sponsors, they've sponsored all of our events during the course of the year. And then at the event itself, we had sponsorships from Thomson Reuters, The Hive, Elevata and Kaijin, uh, and again, we'd like to thank them that really helped make the event uh, quite successful. We had a very full agenda, uh, a lot of very uh, interesting talks during the course of the three days, um, and four workshops that took place uh, concurrently. Uh, and we ended the, the third day with some very interesting discussions on kind of the future of Transmart and uh, discussing the roadmap and where, where people seemed to think things were going. Um, the, uh, we, ha we ran a couple of tracks, uh, and we had uh, nine different sessions on different uh, aspects from scientific applications of Transmart, uh, the data standards roundtable that was led by Thomson Reuters, uh, some discussions on future technology, uh, an open bell session, which was uh, quite interesting and well attended, um, and uh, integrating clinical data and open data. 
uh, these were spread across uh, the different facilities. And um, again, you know, it was, was quite, you know, from the comments that I've heard, a lot of people seemed quite, quite interested and uh, happy with the meeting. The, the disappointing part was that we didn't have as many people as we had hoped uh, in the meeting. And, um, you know, but um, I think the, the, from what, what I've understood, uh, the, the people who were there uh, enjoyed it. Um, we had a lot of vendors uh, there, uh, and you can see the split with um, pharma, nonprofit research groups, uh, and academic groups. So, you know, across this this group, we had a lot of active and, and interesting discussions. Uh, I think during the course of the three days, <clears throat> um, I will also mention that you can. Um, we are making available all of the slide decks, uh, and all the sessions were recorded. And these recordings will be available shortly. Uh, we were able to make use of the very sophisticated facilities at the university, and um, they were live streamed. All of the sessions, uh, if you were able to, to uh, log in and, and look at those, uh, and all the recordings will be available on our website uh, within hopefully a few days. Uh, many of the decks are already up, and uh, hopefully the rest are coming. So, um, if you missed the meeting, uh, sorry that we didn't get to see you. Uh, if you went to the meeting and want to hear some of the talks again or look at some of the talks that you missed because they're in concurrent sessions, uh, they will be up uh, and available for you. I'd like to change our focus a little bit now and talk about the, the 16.2 release. Um, we're going to spend a few minutes going through some of the details uh, and let you know where things stand and where we are in the, the process. Um, the the um, the project management committee, uh, who is actually driving the release and will have final say in when the release is ready and when we, we actually release it, uh, is listed here. These include folks who are actually developing some of the components uh, of the uh, for the release, uh, as well as um, a few other uh, groups who are interested in working closely with us. Uh, and this is the team that uh, is spending. Uh, every other week looking at where we stand, how the development is going, and uh, paying attention to uh, all the details, and we'll be making the, the final call about release readiness. Are we ready to go and, and release the product? Um, the new features that we're, we're trying to get in to the product include Smart R, the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis Connector, which is actually a workflow within Smart R, uh, two different XNAT uh, interfaces, one for viewing and one for actually looking at the data. Uh, a couple of GWAS enhancements, the Plink integration that uh, Thomson Reuters and the University of Liverpool are working on, and enhancements from Pfizer. Uh, some uh, omics uh, enhancements uh, coming from J&J, &J, Etrix, and Trait. Uh, we are restoring the MediCore and Genome Browser, uh, and then there's a number of ETL improvements. And we'll go through each of these somewhat uh, in a, in now as a few minutes as we get through this. Um, the schedule. Uh, that we're, we're working against now is that, uh, first of all, we have a public preview available now. Uh, and you can see on the wiki, uh, on, there's a wiki page on uh, releases, current releases, and there is an entry there for the current public preview. This has almost everything in it. Uh, we are, uh, we have all of the submissions of all of the different features that I just mentioned uh, are uh, now being built into the final version uh, of the release. And we expect to have the beta release code complete by the end of this week, and we'll make it available publicly uh, by uh, November 29th, uh, if not sooner. And we're going to give it uh, several weeks' worth of beta testing, which uh, we're inviting everyone to please, you know, get on, bang on it, uh, try to, you know, do the install, do the, uh, you know, test your, your favorite features and, and see, you know, how you think things are going. Please give us feedback. Please enter you know, any problems that you see in JIRA, uh, or let us know if you see problems and, and we'll enter it for you. Uh, and we can, um, you know, hopefully if uh, things keep going, uh, we, we obviously have done some testing along the way. Uh, and so, you know, from the development group, we, we all feel that the, these things are in pretty good shape, but um, if you see things, please let us know. Um, you can get there if you look at our website, uh, go down on the, uh, the platform tab on the main page of the website, public demos, if you click on that, that brings you to the public instances wiki page. Uh, and up top here are the current uh, formal releases that are publicly released. Down below here are experimental releases, and you'll see the 16.2. Uh, these are the current uh, preview 
uh, instances that you can look at, and that's where you'll see the beta test uh, hopefully within a few days. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Peter Rice, who's going to go through uh, some of the detail of the different uh, specific features uh, from the release. Peter? Thanks very much, Rudy. Can you all hear me? Yes, sounds good. Okay. So this is uh, it's a rehash of the talk that I gave in uh, San Diego with some extra examples for the things that other, other speakers had covered. Really, it's to give a flavor of the, the features that are going to appear in 16.2. So for those who are, are new to it and haven't been following it as we go, uh, we've got various updates to the code base. So 16.1 was really a bug fix to the previous release. And there have been some, some pending updates in the code base that we haven't had a chance to put in until now. Uh, some of those will be quite obvious. There are, as Rudy said, a bunch of new plugin features. And because the new features are mainly plugins, they add new functionality, but they really don't affect the running of everything else. So a lot of these are actually very easy to, to put in and test without disturbing everything else. And 16.1 has been so stable that it's really been quite a joy putting things into 16.2. OK, can I have the next slide, please? So one of the, the things that you'll notice as soon as you go into Transmart that's changed from 16.1 is the Analyze tab interface. So this is the old interface that we've known all the way from Transmart 1.0. If you go to the next slide, this was actually changed at a hackathon early last year. Um, and Etrix have been testing it and loved it. And now we think it's a, a major enough release to slip this one in. So now it builds up the uh, building the subsets as you go. So if you go to the next slide, you, um, once you drop some selection, like an age range in here, another box appears. And you can now drop another, um, another node into the next box. And it just keeps going and expanding as you work your way down. Uh, next slide, please, Rudy. So these are the new plugin features that are coming. And the first two are, are really going to make a difference, I think, to the way people work. Um, HiDome is a high dimensional data query from uh, Denis Verbeek at Janssen. It's part of the eTrix uh, project. And SmartR is kind of originally from the University of Luxembourg, also in eTrix. It's been much worked on by the Hive and Sanofi and others as well. And then there are a couple of XNAP plugins. I'll show a little bit of what XNAT is and what you can get from those if you're working with clinical image data. And then there are some updates to GWAS processing. And as, as Rudy says, the pathway analysis will be a, an extra part of SmartR. Next slide, Rudy. OK, so HiDome was developed by Denny Verbeek at, at Janssen. This is, answers the question of, is it possible to query by gene expression? Um, values and to see gene expression values in the, in the grid view. Uh, next slide. So you simply, in 16.2, take one of the uh, the gene expression microarray, whatever it is, high dimensional nodes, and drop it in to the, the subset query. Next slide. When you do that, up pops this little box, and you can select to search by gene symbol. In the search terms, you start typing a gene name, BRCA. It comes up with BRCA1, BRCA2, etc. You can select whether you query on log intensity or other options for expression data. There's a little slider bar there, and you can move the slider bar, or you can type numbers into the boxes at each end to select a range of expression values. So if you want to be safe, you can put two as the maximum and make sure you get everything. Um, any of those methods will select the expression range. Uh, next slide. And then the expression range comes up as you would see anything else. Um, you can get the expression range in the summary statistics. And if you drag and drop a high dimensional node, you do the same selection of, of genes. And you see that appearing in the, in the summary statistics as well. So here you can see uh, higher expression in subset one and lower expression in subset two with a bit of a gap in between. Uh, which is why the middle bar in the bar chart is the histogram is, is low because some of the entries around zero have not been selected. Uh, next slide. And you also get the expression data appearing in the grid view. So we had one new user at Imperial who was 
looking at transponder, said, what I really would like to see is expression data in the grid view. I said, you just wait a couple of weeks and we'll have it for you. It's, it's one of the things that people think, surely you can get that and now you can. So you can select whichever genes you want to drop into the, the grid view and, uh, and see the data there. Uh, next slide. Uh, the next one, next plugin that will be very noticeable is SmartR. And SmartR basically allows you to do the advanced workflows interactively. So it's limited in the sense that there are only four workflows currently in 16.2. We're expecting a, a new beta version of SmartR to go live in the next couple of weeks, in which case we might be able to slip that into 16.2 and give you even more workflows. And we're expecting um, one pathway analysis workflow to appear there as well. But you, you choose from the workflows that are available. The old advanced workflows are still there for comparison. Let's go to the next slide. And so now you can drop in um, high dimensional data into the first box. You can drop numerical values into the second box. You can drop categorical variables into the, the third box. Uh, you select the data that you, you want to obtain. You click fetch data and it does a single fetch step for Smart R. The data is then available um, on your desktop to carry on analysis. So next slide. And now you can iterate over the, uh, the analysis and rerun things without having to export the data again, which is one of the first gains in Smart R. So at the bottom, we just see some statistics from the data we've downloaded. There are two more tabs. One is uh, pre-process, which allows you to set any remaining parameters for the workflow. And if you go to run analysis, we will then run, in this case, a heat map. Uh, next slide, Rudy. And so you get uh, a bunch of parameters for the heat map, and you can select um, the number of rows you want to see and some other things that you, you can pick. You click Create Plot at the bottom. Next slide. And here's the, the heat map from Smart R. And if you hover over, just hover over one little green um, cell in the middle of a white space, and it pops up with a mouse over and gives you all the st uh, statistics for that node in the heat map. And you can do this across the heat map. There are a bunch of manipulations. There's a gray box down in the bottom right with options that you can configure and rerun or just reuse the data that you've got. So you don't just get a, a static image, which is what Transmart 16.1 always gives you. You can actually play with this. Um, it's actually live data rather than just an image and interact with it much more. Um, I'm still learning how to do this. I really enjoy watching demos of Smart R and people saying, but I can do this and this and this and this. I think I, I get lost, but it's very exciting and uh, great fun to use. I'm sure people will enjoy using it and uh, we'll get a much better idea then of how the workflows can best be used to get analysis results out. There's an effort afoot to uh, build the remaining workflows into Smart R for the, a future version. Uh, next slide. So the next, next topic is the XNet. So XNet is a system that stores medical image data, including um, MRI scans, CT, ultrasound images. This can be one image per patient or a, a set of stacked images to work through. And it includes derived information. So for Alzheimer's patients, brain matter volume, and uh, other information like that derived from the imaging data. And there are two um, plugins. One is to import the data from XNet so that you can search with it in Transmart. And the other is to go back out to XNet to see the images. Next slide. So um, in the importer plugin, you have to log in as an admin. If you're an administrator, there's an option on the admin page that says XNet import. You go there, you give uh, the name and the description of the XNet project that you want to download. You give the address of the XNet server, so this is a public server that anyone can set data up on, but you can also set up your own private XNet server. I'm working through that. It looks like it's quite easy to do. It's just a Postgres database, so if you have Postgres installed for Transmart, you can just add XNet as well. And you set up the, the study node you want to load to. Next uh, slide. 
and so the data comes in. You can select the data that you want to pick up from XNet. There are various ways to store data in XNet as um, sessions, session variables, subjects, and I think subject variables, and any of those can be imported with the plugin into Transmart. When you're ready, you click the Create button at the bottom and it loads the data up. Next slide. And so now you see in the tree, you have um, XNet data and all the information derived from that is, uh, is available for you to, to use in searches. And then the other uh, XNet plugin, next slide. This one came from Mei Yong at Imperial. Um, the data stays in XNet. There's a new table which is rather like the grid view and it lists the, uh, the subjects in the, the study and links to XNet images. So next slide. Oh, I don't have a copy, but it, it's grid view and each, each patient has a, has a link to XNet. You just go straight to XNet from there and you can look at the images and XNet lets you scan through a set of stacked images and various other operations. Okay, next slide. We also had some bug fixes, so we went through testing this with um, eTrix. Uh, so the plugins like SmartR and Hydone that came from eTrix are going into eTrix version 3, which has just gone live. And so we did a lot of testing of some of the other features in 16.2 uh, at that point. And this is just one of the, the bugs that came out of that, which is actually a, a bug in 16.1. Next slide. So quite a lot of people run the survival analysis and they look at this nice Kaplan-Meier plot, um, red and blue lines tailing down, and they're happy. But if you look at the table at the very bottom of the screen, it's empty. It's just got headings and then there's no data underneath. And that turned out not to be a bug in Transmart as such, but it's a bug in R, where um, the R package that's installed on the server has changed. Next slide. And the release notes for that say, oh, but the first three columns tend to be the same number, so let's make the printout shorter. And if the numbers are the same, we just drop a few columns and not tell anybody. So now, of course, the Transmart parser has to count the columns and repeat the first few numbers and... Uh, put back what R has taken away. Um, it shows that when you're running tests, you really do need to look through thoroughly and make sure you identify what's changed and make sure we can document things that are different. And it may well not be a, a Transmart bug as such, but something we need to fix in Transmart because we're dependent on a couple of other things like R. Next slide. There are some other ETL enhancements. So we've been going through um, looking at cases where it's very hard to get data in or out if you have large amounts of data. So there are example studies with a large number of subjects, um, thousands of subjects in a study. There are others where you have more than 30,000 um, variables, categorical variables in the clinical studies, and they can be very hard to import and export. And we have fixes for those. And also expression data, where there's a, a very large number of rows so on the curated data page, there were warnings on a couple of the studies that they can be hard to load, and these are now much easier. So on a, a small system with, say, four gigabytes of memory, it seems to be possible to load these at reasonable speed now. I'm waiting for those who had studies that they say they can take days or longer to load to give this a try through and see if it solved their problems too. But it certainly um, raises the bar for how much we can get through loading data into Transmart. Next slide. Also prototyping a way to populate the browse tab. So particularly for cases where you have several servers with the same data, it's quite awkward copying data into the browse tab in each instance. So we have a system that takes flat files and some scripts that would load the, would check that the uh, control vocabularies exist. And then if everything's fine, it will load the data up on the browse tab automatically and you can then maintain a record of the data that you've loaded and pass it on to other servers. So for the hundred or so curated studies that we have, the plan is to make this data available for each of those and hopefully in Transmart data there'll be a, a simple one line make or if not it's a simple script you can run on the data file to load the data up as a one off. It'll create the programs and it'll create the, uh, the studies and associated data. We're testing it currently on eTrix and then we'll make it available to everybody else. Next slide. 
we had update scripts in Transmart 16.1. The idea was that you could have a, a version 1.2.4, which is the last release under the old system, um, and then you could run these update scripts to update your database automatically to 16.1. We actually tested this on the eTrix public server, which is a Postgres server. We cloned the database, and then we ran the update scripts, and then we ran some additional Postgres scripts to check for differences and updated a few more changes, renaming indexes and tables as needed. Um, and that was all done in uh, half a day or so and updated the database in place. And we'll be able to do that again for 16.2 where really it's just adding some new tables and adding a little bit of extra data. Very small changes between 16.1 and 16.2 to the database. It's new tables for the XNet plugins and uh, things like that. Next slide. We have a set of curated data sets available on uh, the library server and on the curated data page that's um, listed down at the bottom there. And you can pick up any of those data sets and uh, install them as curated examples. Some of them have been done more than once, but most of these are, are studies from each from one source. All the studies from eTrix have been made available. Rancho have made a lot of studies available. Some others from Thomson Reuters and other sources. And all the test data from Sanofi has been made available there too for multiple data types. We also had a offer in uh, eTrix for some XNet image data, so we're hoping to be able to use that to test the XNet plugins. And we welcome any more curated data sets. If anyone else has curated data they'd like to share, just let us know where to pick it up from and we can add it to the collection. Next slide. We also had one step installation script for Ubuntu. Um, we're working on updating that for 16.2. It will still support Ubuntu 14 because that's the, the simplest one, the one we've all been using. We may need to think about setting up something for Ubuntu 16 and I've also looked at Fedora, Red Hat and some others to look at what the differences would be. If there are any volunteer testers who'd like to try these things, we can try working on a, a one-off install for them. Next. Slide, please. Uh, we've already started testing. As I say, we tested a lot with uh, the eTrix testers um, through August and September. Um, we tested a lot of the, the features, which are the new code changes. Uh, we tested SmartR on the High Dome and the XNet Viewer, and it's proved to be very stable. 16.1 um, was a particularly stable release. We spent a lot of effort on uh, fixing bugs. Um, fixing inconsistencies, and that's been a huge benefit in uh, working on 16.2. We're clearly seeing the gain, and I don't think we'll need such a long testing um, phase this time. Uh, next slide. So these are the servers that are available. There's a re release test server which currently has a copy of the, the latest build on it, but we'll make a formal beta release um, after the code freeze and then put that on there. You can also catch the latest build on Postgres CI server. So Postgres test has a newly loaded set of data. I've recreated the database and put new data on. Um, that's pretty much complete loading that now. And we'll still have the demo server for the last stable release, um, currently 16.1. I hope early in January that will switch to 16.2. I think the next slide is just the acknowledgements. Yep, so thanks to everybody who've contributed. It's been a it's been a joy working on 16.2. I hope everybody enjoys it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Peter. Uh, I think um, an interesting point, you know, is that um, the difference between 16.1, which was largely bug fix, not a lot of new things contributed. Uh, in this case, we've got code coming from several different organizations. Uh, a lot of folks have been. Uh, really working hard to get their pieces in order uh, and also to get these things integrated uh, in uh, up to a level of quality uh, and um, assuring the integration uh, is sufficient that uh, we can get a, a good release together and, and um, put out. And so uh, I'd like to give a, a big thank you to everyone uh, for all the work that they've done 
uh, already on this release, and uh, we're, we're really excited. We think that we've got something that's looking uh, pretty good here. So um, we'll see. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinions. Please, uh, you or colleagues, your organization who are interested in ABLE, uh, please you know, start to look at this and um, test it and give us your feedback. So I'd like to open up now for questions. If anyone has a question, you can post it in the question window. You can raise your hand uh, or, yeah, I guess.